player 2 has joined the game. Hey yo, what's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of the 2 Player Co-op Podcast. As always, I'm one of your hosts here, Kevin, along with my brother from my mother, Sean. How we doing? Along with two special guests, including Mr. James Solar. I was supposed to say something. I don't know. I don't wasn't sure if I was supposed to say something. You, you or can not. do I whatever. Just smiled. You want. We're we're rolling with it now. For a second. We're rolling with it now. Yeah. As well as for the first time ever on the channel, Mr. Derek Bamford. Hi guys. Thank you for having welcome, me. Welcome, welcome. And also claps for James, but James has been here before. So yeah. Um so I'm really excited about this episode. This is the first time we've we've done something like this. So I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. But if this is the first time you're seeing, hearing, or listening to us, this is the Two Player Co-op Podcast, where just about every week, two brothers get together to tell you everything you need to know about in the world of video games. If you like that, make sure you like the video, subscribe, share it with your friends, family, and everyone in betwixt. If you only listen on audio services, that's cool too. Just make sure you give us a five-star review, thumbs up, or whatever your service allows. If you really like us, you can go to patreon.com slash two-player co-op, where we recently made some changes, just like... One dollar, well, this was not a change, but for one dollar, you become a booster where you get the podcast live one day early every week. Three dollars makes you a sponsor, new tier, where you get a bonus episode every month. Five dollars, oh, that reminds me, I got to go back and make everything. I'll I'll fix that. Five dollars, you're a producer, but now that means when we're not on Zoom, you get to watch us record the podcast live on YouTube every week. Ten dollars makes you an affiliate where you will have access to a monthly Q&A episode, which I will be posting the link for that tomorrow. Sean and I will record it next week, and then we'll go from there. Um, And then $20 makes you a partner where you can choose the bonus episode topic and record with us if you so choose. Some of our affiliates deserve a shout out, just like some of the people on this call right now. Those include our affiliates, James Solar. Also, make sure you check out James Games and More on YouTube, Sarah Solar, John Tingley, Derek Bamford, and... Mom, hey, hey. I was gonna say chat, Aunt but... Sue. <laughs> well, well, we'll get there. I don't think mom, my, mom had to one up Aunt Sue, she yeah. went for the uh, the affiliate level. And if if Aunt Sue ever actually watches one of these, she'll be like, What the heck? and then she'll become uh, an affiliate. <laughs> 40 uh, years old, and your mom still supports you guys. As well That's our as, allowance, as well, yeah, exactly. But if we say shut up, we have to put a quarter in the in the shut up jar. Um, that's right. Uh, as well as our producers, Steve Appleton, Aunt Sue, Dustin Downs, and Chris Peralta. Also, make sure you check out PS Rewind on YouTube. If you like cool t-shirts and the like, you can go to teespring.com slash stores slash two-player co-op. Sean, I can't see uh, the Zoom right now, so I don't know if you did the the thing, but you don't have to do it with this. I, I didn't. Okay, good. Um, so James and Derek, thank you guys so much for jumping on here. Um, yeah. thank you for having us. Yeah. We had, we, we had a kind of extended family issue. Um, Sean and I were thinking we were probably going to have to do this, um, remote anyways, because Brittany was going to be out of town, but, um, something happened. So everything kind of got sped up and it was easier to just do this remote either way. Um, mm-hmm. but we put out a call to our discord and James and Derek an- a- answered, and I'm just so happy you guys are here. Derek, I know you probably can't hang around the entire time. That's fine, but so happy you're here. So happy to finally see your face and actually get Thanks. to talk to you after seeing your name and, and you know. For like a couple of years, right? Virtually yeah, many for a long years time. time. <laughs> yeah. Um, so before we get into all the video game stuff, and this first one is kind of video game related, and I'm so confused about this because I could have sworn that – Sean and I talked about this on an episode of the podcast at some point, but Deadline reported this week that Mortal Kombat 2021 version is getting a sequel, and Simon McCoy, I don't know if that's right, is coming back to direct. Um, I know a lot of people did not like this movie. It was not what I wanted from Mortal Kombat movie because there was no Mortal Kombat tournament, but... I think they did a decent job with laying the groundwork, even though we don't care about what's the new guy's name, Cole. Maybe sounds right. Yeah. He's pretty forgettable. He's pretty much just an avatar for the audience. Yeah, exactly. He just goes, 
and then he gets like Aquaman <laughs> armor or something. Um, but I think the choreography was awesome. The opening with Sub Zero and Scorpion was amazing, even though they gave that away for free before the movie came out. Um, I'm happy about this, but I want to know what y'all think. So I'll go Sean first. What are your thoughts on Mortal Kombat officially getting a sequel, which I could have sworn was already official before this last week? Uh, yeah, I'm excited. I don't know if it was official, but I feel like we kind of saw it coming. Uh, it's, I was pretty sure it was going to do well enough to warrant a sequel. They have the obvious, uh, I don't want to say cliffhanger, but well, yeah, thing at the end, um, certainly teasing a second one. As far as the director, I don't, other than the fact that this guy did the first one, I don't know anything about this guy, but mm-hmm. I like the first one well enough to say, I guess I'm glad it's the same guy coming back for the second one. Don't, you know, totally change it up on us. Um, but I have pretty high hopes for the second one, at least from a video game movie perspective. I'm never preparing to be blown away by a video game adaptation of a movie, but I kind of look at this as the latest version of the Ninja Turtle movies where the first one was just kind of like, all right, here we go. We're starting this thing up again. And then the second one was like, for me anyway, everything I wanted out of a new Ninja Turtles. The cartoon came I think this one, exactly. Yeah, I think we'll get some more familiar faces, at least one that was pretty obvious from the end. Miz. And hopefully an actual Mortal Kombat tournament. I think this is going to be more of what we would expect out of a Mortal Kombat movie. So I'm excited. Agreed. Derek, do you have any thoughts? Uh, yeah, I mean, I saw it on HBO Max. Yep. Um, was it in theaters? It wasn't in theaters. It was, but it was still like before theaters. Yeah, it was like theaters hadn't really come back yet. So I I watched it on my iPad on HBO Max. Yeah, yeah, I remember watching it on HBO Max and I enjoyed it actually. Um, like like you guys said, the the beginning was uh pretty cool, and then the end battle with um Sub Zero and Scorpion was cool kind of in the middle was I, I forget most of it um to be honest with you but um i think like sean said it, it lays the groundwork for yeah. the next one and to be honest it can't be any worse than the, that matrix movie that came out <laughs> after it i didn't is, even see it oh uh, yeah it i was, still haven't watched it it was horrific do not see it i mean the the opening scene was cool and then it just it just all downhill from there but yeah. um I mean, more Matrix. I'm cool with that. More, more of that. That's whatever. It's cool. <laughs> James, what do you think? Um, I, I'm not sure that I ever saw uh, Mortal Kombat. Um, I don't particularly remember hearing anything good or bad about it. So for the people that were a fan of the movie, I guess I'm glad that they're getting another one. But I don't know that it's going to make me um, go and see it or anything. So I really really don't remember. I I just, I don't remember what happened in this movie. I remember barely the new guy that I think we're saying his name is Cole. I remember be completely wrong. I don't know, but (laughs) I think it's right. Um, The best part of the movie, I think at least based on what I remember is the Sub-Zero and Scorpion part. I do like the, again, kind of mini spoiler alert. I like that they kind of flipped the script on us and made Scorpion the good guy instead of Sub-Zero. I thought that was interesting. Um, And I remember the part with, God, I don't remember, was it Kano maybe? They did, they paid a little homage to the cheap, you know, leg sweep, leg sweep, leg sweep, leg sweep tactic in the movie. I thought that was pretty cool, so... I don't know. I thought it was pretty good. Although I honestly, I don't really remember much about the movie at this point. Forgettable would be the word that we're all looking for. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was good. I enjoyed it when I watched it, but yeah, I don't remember a whole lot at this point. I thought it was fine. I thought Goro, that fight was cool. That was the only time that I thought Cole was cool. Sonya and Kano, that fight was cool. Kano has the eye laser. There, there were good parts of it. Liu Kang was underused from what I remember. Um, But I think it set, like, the choreography was great. The story wasn't much. But I'm I'm excited to see where this goes. So we'll see. Um, Next thing I want to talk about before we get into the other stuff is, so Comic-Con. And I've got thoughts on Comic-Con. 
and this is not me just being a butt hurt DC, you know, fanboy because he got his hopes up that Henry Cavill was going to come back and be Superman. It has nothing to do with this. Um, but I that, it has everything to do with it. <laughs> that, but it sucked. That that sucked. And it's my it's completely my fault. Like Angry Joe was like, why do I let you people do this to me? I was saying the same thing. Like it sucks. But so I DC, whatever. They showed Black Adam. The Rock's awesome. I don't know about this movie. Apparently, Cavill's not in it, or Superman, like just you know, from the neck down, like Shazam, whatever. The next Shazam movie does look cool, but the big thing to come out of Comic Con was apparently Phase Five and Six of the MCU. Even though Phase Four, to me, I just don't, I just don't care. There's no direction. But for five and six, we're getting Ant Man, Quantumania, uh, Agatha, Coven of Chaos, the Marvels, coven. huh? Coven. Coven. Like a witch coven. Yeah. Y'all like are oven, smart, but a coven. Okay, y'all are smarter than me. Okay, we're getting Blade, COVID. which will probably be freaking like PG or something. Captain America, New World Order. I'm excited for that movie. I hate that name. Uh, Daredevil, Born Again is like a 37 episode long show, I guess. Uh, Echo TV show that was already announced, but I have no idea what it is. The first is thing I do with Hawkeye like a Hawkeye spinoff or something. I don't know, but I don't know if it's like Clint Barton Hawkeye or Kate Bishop daughter, Hawkeye. I don't, yeah. I don't know, but yeah. Or maybe it has nothing to do with either of them. But. Right. We're also getting Guardians 3. Thank you. Ironheart. I have no idea. Uh, Loki Season 2, Secret Invasion TV show, Thunderbolts, which when I read it at first, I got excited because I thought it said Thundercats for some reason. <laughs> yeah, and it was not uh, fan fantastic for, um, and then they're closing off phase six with Avengers, the Kang Dynasty, or is it Kong? Kang, I think it's Kang. Kang. I don't know. Okay, Kang, I think. And then Avengers Secret Wars, but so we're doing Secret Wars, but there's literally not one X Men movie announced. I don't. Well, we also don't know anything about Phase Six yet, except for how it ends. So uh, there should be a whole slate okay. of movies okay. coming before that, because all those other things were Phase Five. I think. No, well, but so, no, Avengers, guessing, Avengers, Kang, and Avengers Secret Wars and Phase Six. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, there's gonna be a lot more to come before that, and these movies okay. are six months apart as of right yeah. now. So I don't know when the last movie of Phase. Uh, five is supposedly coming out but i think avengers was like may and november of 2025 yeah so i don't know how much time there is between the last part of phase five and avengers and phase phase six but we've got to get the x-men at some point so wasn't there a wolfenstein game called the new world order yeah Yes, or, something or the new like order, that. Something right? like yeah. <laughs> the new order. Some I, I think it was new order, but the remake, the first one, right? Yes, yes. Because the second one had his daughters in it. Yeah, the second one was something about the Colossus or something. Uh, I don't know. So I don't know. It just seemed really familiar. The name seemed really familiar to me. Well, yeah, because Hollywood Hogan. That's what I'm saying. Like, is Hollywood Hogan <laughs> gonna come out and like leg drop like poor Sam Wilson or something? I don't know. <laughs> Um, so my thing with that, like, I liked Falcon and Winter Soldier. I loved it. Yeah, I, I like the idea. See, that's that, that's the thing. Yeah. I feel like I'm in the minority. I didn't like. I didn't even finish the Hawkeye one. I got one episode in. I, was I like, did. This yeah, is I didn't trash. watch it at all. Yeah. And the other one, um, the um, the Captain America and Falcon and the Winter Soldier one, I just felt like was just completely unnecessary. I it felt was like just a long. Happened. It was a whole. Yeah, it was a whole bunch of. Okay, it was a lot of stuff basically just to say, all right, Sam is the new captain. You could have just been like, here's the shield. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I feel like not a whole lot of consequence happened in that, but I'm down with him being Captain America. I don't think he'll ever top Chris Evans, but, like, I get it. It's fine. But I don't like... I mean, I have less of a problem with the name than I do with like the logo it just looks 
cheap to me, like the type, the font, or there's something about it that I'm just like, this doesn't scream like Captain America to me. This looks Which, like it's lo- another the like, logo for the movie. Yeah. Yeah. For the new one. It I just haven't looks, seen it. It just looks very, it looks like somebody created it in PowerPoint. Or I was going to say, it, it looks, looks like very... something we did for the podcast in PowerPoint. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, <laughs> and I, you can only read so much into it. It's a logo. Who cares? But I don't know. I just, I don't have a good feeling about it. I'm excited for Guardians. Yep. And honestly, not a whole lot else. I don't know. I know a lot of people <laughs> are excited for Fantastic Four. I never, I've never I've literally cared. never seen any of the movies from either of the last two iterations. I don't like, think any never of them are worth watching. Much. Yeah, I, saw... I, just, I just don't care. I um I haven't seen Fant Four Stick, but I've seen the other two. <laughs> The other two, um, I don't remember what the, I think the first one was just Fantastic Four, and then the second one was uh, Rise of the, the Silver Surfer. Silver Surfer. Yeah. Um, and they were both like fine, yeah, like not just, terrible. Like it's not Howard yeah. the Duck, but it's not <laughs> right. Howard <laughs> so, the Duck is great. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, so Derek, what what are your thoughts? I, I don't know where you stand on the MCU and everything. Yeah, so for me, uh, the pinnacle was Endgame. Yeah. And then I'm basically just closing out storylines like Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, Guardians. And then after that, I just, I don't care. I don't yep. care at all. Um, I, you know, X-Men reboot could be cool in a couple of years, but like all these like D and F tier superheroes, I mean, granted, Iron Man wasn't a tier to begin with, but they made yeah. him into something. He, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And but like Ironheart is just, you know, it's a token Iron Man, and all these other. I mean, that's oh. what they're doing across the board. Yeah. That's yeah. what that Ironheart, is. Kate, Kate Ironheart Bishop is, is a token uh, Hawkeye. You know. Okay. Exactly. The, and they're doing it across the board. I haven't seen Thor. If anybody here has, I don't know. I no know. spoilers because I do want to watch it at some point. I assumed Thor, I didn't think he was going to die, but I assume he's just out of the picture after the movie. And now we just have Natalie Portman in Thor. I don't know if that's true, but like we've got she Thor, we've got she Hulk, we've got she Iron Man, we've got she Loki. It's the MCU. (laughs) Dang it. We've got she Hawkeye. Wait, by the way, by the way. Probably she Black Panther. We I'm love like oh. we we love women. Can we come up with a new idea, please? <laughs> we love women. We are not in any way demeaning any gender or anything like that. We are just making no, it just statements comes about the state of the MCU. I'm just being stupid. I don't know. And I know it's all comic uh accurate. Like it's yeah, not it like is. they're just making so, this stuff up out of nowhere, but it just I proves saw, the... I saw Thor. Oh sorry, go ahead, Derek. Okay, sorry. It just proves that these companies have no faith in individual uh, female characters that they have to do basically gender swaps of all of them because yeah, they just exactly. have no faith yeah. in original female or original black characters and it's sad really because yeah. there's some great female characters out there and some great black characters out there and some great and especially know. if they ever get moving on whatever's going to come of the x-men yeah. x-men is oh my god yeah like you've got plenty of opportunities there but I don't know. James, what were you going to say? Um, Spoiler free. I, I don't remember. If it comes, if it comes back to me, so, I'll, well, I'll you say it, Thor. but I don't remember. Uh, yeah, I saw Thor, and I didn't think that of the the characters that you were mentioning, Sean, I thought that what they did with um, Jane in that movie was better than how they've treated the other ones. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't at least say when I first heard that she was taking up the mantle, I'm like, Natalie Portman as like Thor, like, was... give me a break. But then once I saw her, I'm like, that's all CG. Okay. She, well, yeah. well, yeah, but she at least looked the part more than I would have thought. But yeah, who knows? I haven't seen the movie. So I don't having, know how they actually Having seen the movie, her, I thought but... that she fit the part pretty, uh, actually really well. Okay. Um, but I liked without i mean without spoiling anything in the movie i liked what they did with her in the movie and kind of um worked her fitting into that role into the um kind of the narrative of the movie okay yeah 
I will say I'm this, definitely though. I definitely want to see it. I'm just looking forward to when I can just watch it for free on Disney Plus. Yeah. I will say this though. I would I would kill for a 30 minute comedy of Korg. Just like a buddy show of him. He's so I'm good. shot. The fact that we're getting a freaking I am Groot series. Oh my god, like, why? It's easy but, to write. For. Yeah. If yeah, you say I am Groot, yeah. people go, mm, okay. But like give us a core. I would watch a Korg miniseries. Korg's I mean, I don't awesome. know if I would watch it, but I would be a lot more interested in that than a lot of the stuff they've been pumping out. Taika so. Watiti is great. Have you have you any guys seen his new show, uh, Our Flag Means Death? I've heard so no, many. I've heard, I've heard so many good things about it. Yeah, it's good. He plays uh, Blackbeard in it. Okay, it's it's great. It's actually I had to look it up, but it's based on historical events yeah. sort of thing. But it's a straight comedy. And it's Amazon. Is it HBO? It's HBO. It's thirty minutes. I think it's okay. Six or eight episodes. It's really quick. You could blow through it in a weekend. Mm-hmm. Okay. Also mm-hmm. directed by Taika Waititi, I would recommend uh, Jojo Rabbit, um, that is which is good. a World War yeah. II um, satire. Yeah, he yeah, plays yeah. Uh, Hitler in it. <laughs> Taika does? He does. Yeah. He does. He plays Hitler. <laughs> but it's oh my yeah. god, it's amazing. <laughs> it's hilarious, um, though. <clears throat> so my my thing, because all the point of this is is to build up to the next Avengers thing, and now we have two more Avengers movies coming. But my question is: after Endgame, who in the blue hell? are the Avengers. Iron Man's gone. Captain America's gone. Black Panther, God damn it, is gone. Like, what Thor, I assume it will be gone, either because of this movie or because of something before then. Black Widow's dead. Yeah, like, what? who's who's left? Like, we've Guardians got are done after even, their did, movie. Did, did Clint live through the show? He's, I have no idea. He lived, but I feel like I mean I didn't watch it, but I got I got the feeling he's just like I'm done. Like I don't know, he's just hanging up his bow. I don't know, but I don't think he died. I think he's just. I just I just feel like maybe he's still. My thing is about branding. Yeah, but like, what are the Avengers at this point? Like, if it's just a bunch of like D list comic, yeah, like that's my biggest thing. And I know I'm a sad, depressed man. DC old man DC fan but like I I want to want to watch these movies but it's like it's Guardians 3 and then when the X-Men show up you know I, I'm I'm yeah. sure by the time they get to Avengers 3 years from now if we're all still alive then I'll see them but like I can't even imagine going from Avengers in 2012 to Kang Dynasty in 2025 when most of the people I care about are either dead or gone. I just don't know. It, it's like they're living off that they're, like they're, they're living off the MCU as we used to know it, but I don't, everything that I've seen so far in phase four but, has just been like, we don't know what we're doing. We're just like, there's all these stories. So um, the, the people, I this is my theory. The people that are going to see these movies are the same people that still pre-order games, right? They will consume regardless of what it is. They'll buy the special editions of everything, and uh, you know, it's just like consume, consume, consume. They just go. They don't care. Yeah. And those are the people. And you know, it, it's the movies basically they're so broad have such a broad audience that they could take a 10 or even a 20 percent audience hit and still make a billion dollars exactly right james what were you gonna say um you were saying i don't know did i just hear mgm or something i don't remember i don't remember exactly what i was gonna say but i don't so personally I haven't been super excited for a lot of Marvel stuff since Endgame, yeah. but I feel like not really watching all the trailers and not um, getting super excited for stuff and just kind of keeping expectations low and then just kind of going in and seeing what it is. I've actually really enjoyed a lot of stuff that I didn't think I was going to enjoy at all. And then the stuff that I was expecting to enjoy, um, I didn't. So I didn't particularly care for Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I thought it was kind of fine. Um, but I wasn't expecting to like Loki or WandaVision, and I thought both of those were really good. 
I liked WandaVision a lot. I don't get the obsession with Agatha. Agatha, yeah. Like Yeah, I don't uh, I don't know. I didn't think that they did enough or I didn't that how they left her in WandaVision didn't make me want to see a show about her. Um no, we uh, but don't. I thought I thought WandaVision for what it was when you try to explain it to somebody, it sounds really bad, but I actually found it, it to sounds be ridiculous. I found it to be really entertaining. I, yeah. It was good. And it was different than certainly any, anything that the MCU has done before and different than pretty much anything I've seen anybody do before. I liked it a lot more than I thought I would. I, I think mm-hmm. the, as far as the I, Marvel shows, I think that WandaVision is probably the best. The only one that I would say for me, would uh, yeah, I probably would, I, compete with it would be Loki and I really liked Loki. Yeah. Which Loki um, and Moon Knight are my favorites. Yeah, I didn't they, even uh, get into Moon Knight. Do you introduce Kang and Loki? Okay. Kang right. the Conqueror. Who um they they int- I'm sure obviously, you know, the first time you see Thanos, he's not really doing much. He like smiles at the camera. He goes, Fine, I'll do it myself. Whatever. But like Kang Again, I watched Loki. I liked it. It was okay. I feel like I was very confused through a lot of that. Okay, the last episode of remember about Kang. I thought the last episode was kind of boring. Is he's just a dude sitting there? Like he didn't really. And there's time. I'm sure they can build him up. But I'm like, this is the new like big bad guy in the MCU. This guy, like, I think they really did his character disservice. I heard, I don't know anything about him, but that's Uh, maybe that's so I don't know anything about King, but from what I've heard from um, a friend of mine, who's super into um, comics and stuff is that Kang is like a really cool character and that like the stuff that they've been able to do with him. But I do feel like they were kind of giving him a dis they kind of gave him a disservice in the show because basically what they did with him was in the, in the finale of the show, they just used him to dump like 30 minutes of like exposition, whereas it didn't really make him seem like a cool character at all. Yeah. But the rest of Loki, I thought was really good. So I'll, I'll close it out like this. WB slash DC. Stop. Just stop this BS and bring the best Superman we've ever had back. He's better then you know who he just is. He's better than he's better than Reeves. He's better than Tyler Hoechlin. He's better than Brandon Routh, who I always saw, thought should have played Cyclops, but that's just me. Like he's the best Superman we've ever had. And I don't as much as better than Dean Kane. Dean. Well, yes, he's man of steel. I will go to my grave saying that is at least a nine out of 10. That movie is amazing. I love it so much. Then Batman versus Superman happened. Then Justice League happened. But then we got Justice League, which is the biggest travesty I've ever seen. Say what you want about the Snyder Cut. Four hours, I get it. But that movie actually makes sense. Batman versus Superman, the extended cut, makes sense. He is awesome as Superman. He has had to deal with some horrible writing and some horrible directing. I will say that. The fact that this guy has never gotten some horrible another CGI. Show. Oh my God. But look, we got, we got MI fallout. So I, like, I, I can't be mad at that. That's one of the best action movies that has ever existed. Um, do the right thing and bring him back. Otherwise, if you're not going to do that, give him to Marvel and have him be Mr. Fantastic or whatever his name is. Like just, or have him be Cyclops and have Cyclops not be a douche. Like in the original movies, like do, do something with Henry Cavill. We don't deserve him. And I'm, I'm never, ever, ever going to get my, my buddy Rasan, who i mentioned a lot on the podcast was like, dude, don't, don't lose hope. They didn't want to blow their load at, at Comic-Con. You know, they got DC fandom. We assume happening this fall or this holiday, whatever. And I'm like, you're, you're, you're going to wait for DC fandom. Like now you're just patronizing me that um, you're going to wait for DC fandom to bring Cavill back. Not at freaking Comic-Con when it's finally live in San Diego for the first time in three years. Really? You're going to do that. I don't think so. <sighs> for the record. I don't know that I would want Cavill as Mr. Fantastic. No, I'm, I'm very much as Superman. I'm very much on the John Krasinski, Mr. Fantastic. But that's not happening. It's not happening. 
You got but, that in the Doctor Strange movie. That's all you're it's, getting. Yeah, it's that's not all happening. we're getting. No, it's going to be. Uh, it's going to be what's his face from Top Gun Maverick. That's that's my prediction. What's his name? Uh, Goose's kid with the mustache. No, the, guy, yeah, the that, mustache. Didn't they already do that? Oh my god! Really? Was he in the fan? Wasn't he Mister Fantastic in the reboot? Yeah. Yes. Oh my god. Okay. Well, then I'm was. stupid. Yeah. Never mind. That's okay. already happened. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. Okay. Did any of you guys see Peacemaker? No, I, I saw no. I saw the post credits. It's scene. good. Okay. So my thing is, if they couldn't get him back or wouldn't get him back for that, there's no shot. Yeah. But it goes it, and, and it goes back to Shazam too, like the the cafeteria scene. Like, oh, it's so frustrating. Like, I don't know what I, I am not against having a black Superman. I'm fine with that. But like, there are he, he shouldn't be Cal L. There, there are so many comic stories with black Superman. I'm fine. Michael B. Jordan, somebody else, whoever. I am completely fine with that. He would be awesome. But I feel like Henry Cavill did not get a fair shot. The fact that we didn't get Man of Steel 2 slash Man of Tomorrow and then whatever the third one would have been. It's just like, it's freaking Zach, but ugh, I could go on forever. Um, so yeah, I love Henry Cavill. Please bring him back. All right. So now let's talk about what we've been playing. Derek, I don't know how long we've got you for, so why don't you go first? What have you been playing uh, this past week or so? Oh, when I have 30 seconds to myself, I'm well, not yeah. coding like a madman. Um, I, I did restart uh, God of War okay. um, recently, and uh, I'm excited for the new one. Um, hopefully I can finish it before, before the new one comes out, but I don't know. It's tough. So you got as far as Sean did, which was how, how far was or Lef 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 okay. or something like that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, whatever that is. Alfheim. Yeah. Alfheim. Alfheim. And I, I'm. It's funny because I'm. I think Kevin, you mentioned this. I've got all this stuff to buy gear and stuff, but I'm afraid to spend it on anything because what happens when you know a piece of gear comes later on in the game and i'm like well i don't have anything so i actually looked up like a guide and i'm like all right maybe i should just wait until this boss or whatever and get a level eight armor or whatever rather than spending it on a level seven armor now and then not having enough stuff yep. i'm also finding i can't not do the side quests even though i don't hmm. need to do them and i should probably just mainline, mainline the story it, yeah. you, but you said you were replaying it are you doing new game plus or are you just uh Starting from yeah. starting fresh. Yeah, new game plus. Um, I should have done easy. Not that it matters, but um, I, I really like new game plus. That's what I'm doing. Like, <laughs> I always liked having like overpowered characters. Yeah. Um, replaying games is just so much more fun. I think. The um, the biggest yeah. the the biggest thing for me that's weird, and I'm still not going to spoil it, just in case someone <laughs> out there has not played this game yet. Starting the game with that is weird in the story especially when when you get to that part which is one of the best parts in any game of the last 15 20 years but it's so it's so much freaking fun it is so much fun to have that or those from the beginning um it changes everything and i just love it and it's so crazy that like how, how can i skirt around this i've heard interviews with cory barlog where he was saying that like they didn't add that slash those until like the last year because they're like, we can't do it. We've built everything around this mechanic and to try to put this in, it's impossible. And somehow they made it work. And having that from the beginning is so much fun. And I just, oh, I love this game. I, I honestly don't know if I'm going to play all the way through it because I pretty much remember everything that happens. But just having that or those from the beginning are amazing. Obviously, if if you, you probably have figured out what the hell I'm saying at this point, yeah. even if you haven't played the game. But I mean, come on. <laughs> I, have I think I'm gonna know. replay it um, later in the year. Probably like I'll probably start it like early to mid October to try to get done before the uh, the year ends or before um, Ragnarok comes out. Yeah. Okay. First off, all of you guys have to play Red Dead Redemption Two before any of this. <laughs> <sighs> I try. Dude, now, granted, so I know I'm, I'm in like the prologue, but man, I, I don't like it yet. I'm telling you, this the gameplay is amazing, but that's. I mean, yeah, it's it's is... universally loved. I don't. I'm sure I would like it, 
I kind of feel like Death Stranding, maybe, where I'm just like, even if it does get really I good, hate you so much. <laughs> like, It'll probably be the next can... big game that I start. I mean, yeah. like it's it, it. I mean, for me, it's the best story that Rockstar has ever written. Period. It's yeah. better See, than any of the GTA games. Better than, per- yeah, like, period. It's, it might even be my favorite game of all, one of my favorite games of all time. So that wow. and and that's the one thing. So like when Colin and the crew were doing their top, you know, twenty five PS four games, and that finished. One, one, right? It was one. Yeah. yeah. Death Stranding was two, by the way, Sean. Thank you very much. I know Derek, it's a walking and falling over simulator. <laughs> um, but That's like wrong the, simulator. But what they were saying <laughs> was that like like it, it, it the reason Metal Gear Solid 3 is my favorite game of all time, and I don't think it'll ever be topped, is the story. And it's because I think it's first off, it's my favorite series of all time, but it's also, in my opinion, the best story ever told in a video game. But Every time I hear somebody talk about Red Dead 2, it's not about the cleaning your gun and falling in mud and shaving your hair and cutting your nails and whatever. Like all that just goes to the side because the freaking game or the the story is so damn good that any of the like realistic things that happen in there, it just it 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 overwhelms it because it's such an amazing story. And that's the one reason I'm like I, I have those, to actually play this game. Those realistic elements are are completely overblown too. It's okay. not like, you know, in um, which, I forget which Grand Theft Auto it was, but where like if you eat too much food, you get fat. San Andreas. San Andreas. Yeah, yeah San Andreas. Yeah. <laughs> or or your gun doesn't work if you don't clean it. I clean my gun because I enjoy cleaning it. Like I like having a clean gun, but you you literally don't have to do any of that. Okay. Um, you know, and yeah, uh, that's how I assumed it would be. But it's it is one of those games where you just you're gonna play for about six hours and not do jack when it comes to the main storyline because you just you just <clears throat> enjoy being in that world and just doing stuff, you know. So um, I the one the one thing I would say is it really picks up after the intro, uh, which is it's about Snow. two to two and a half hours once you get out of the mountains and okay. into the okay. main story area. Um, it can drag, especially if you kind of already know the mechanics and how things go. Um, but after that, it once it opens up, it's it's game on. Uh, I'm gonna play it. I'm gonna play it. I, I, it, it I'll does. play it again. I don't even care. <laughs> Dude, what What's so annoying to me though is that I bought it on sale for 26 bucks, and then I was like, okay, Stray's coming out. I want to play this. Spoiler alert here for 15 minutes or so. But it's like I can buy Stray for 30 bucks or I can upgrade to PS Plus Extra for 23 and save seven bucks. So I'm like, okay, cool. So I do the upgrade. But then I'm like, why the hell did I buy Red Dead? So now I've spent 26 bucks. I'll never get back, but it, it is what it is. I, I just, I'm at the point now where I need to play that freaking game. And maybe that's well, what I should do. I should I just like, beat Stray and then yeah. Red Dead. Well, like Jan, I think James had mentioned a while back, I bought it day one and I didn't even open the package for like a mm. year. Because wow. I just had like a stack of games that I was just either playing or I just didn't have time. You know, you just don't feel like it sometimes. Just like, I don't feel like playing games. No, I trust me, I know. On the couch. Yep. And scroll through my phone for hours. <laughs> yep. But yeah, it's definitely worth it. <sighs> have you played anything else, Derek? Uh, no, I'm I'm pretty much in. It's been a couple. Of, it's about a year now, but I'm in a rec, not like a retro thing, but basically playing older games i might go back and play resident evil 2 remake and 3 um because i'm really excited about four. Oh my god um, i've got um oh. i've got my own steam deck on pre-order nice so i'm excited about that um i'm giving my wife the basement for her craft room so then i can get her room and make my own video game room nice so i'm excited about that <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Have they given a date for Resident Evil 4? March 24th. 20... March okay. 24th, 2023. Not that I'm obsessed yeah. or anything. And I... is there a way that's convenient to play Resident Evil 1? On PS4. Is it, it released natively on there? Well, not, not the original. The remake? The, the remake, I think. Yeah. When did that remake original? come out? I think it's, it's like the... the GameCube one from like 
it's two or something. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but look, like, anyway. Res- I-, I cannot wait for Resident Evil 4. Like, I, I again, I didn't play it when it came out. So, Resident Evil 4 and I, as Sean knows, we've never really gotten along. Um, I think it's a really good game. I think it was held back by the controls. Just the fact that in the little tiny bit of gameplay we got for the remake, we can see Leon walking into the village. He pulls his gun and then he moves side to side and he strafes. I was like, I'm in. That's all. I don't even care what it looks like. That's all I wanted. Like th- this, this remake, man, I, I, again, I shouldn't even say this because I'm hyping stuff up way too much, but it has the potential in my mind that this could crack my top five of all time where a lot of people already have Resident Evil four that played it when it came out. I didn't, I didn't play it until 2017. So by then the controls didn't hold up, but man, Resident Evil four remake is so my, my hype for that is probably more than breath of wild two at this point. I think I was for me, for me it is. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to replay Resident Evil four in the last year, but then when I heard they were remaking, I was like, I'll just wait. Yep. I do remember one of my biggest problems with that game was the length. It was just too, it felt too long for me, but maybe I'm just misremembering it, to be honest with you. No, I, I, I did think, I think when I beat it, it was 17 or 18 hours, but I think it felt long because I didn't feel like the controls held up through that many hours of gameplay, looking through it to with me, a 2017 eye. That's long for a Resident Evil game, right? Yeah. That's yeah, way long. It's like yeah. double. The because I, I think the two and three remakes are both in like the what six to ten hour range two is say like 10 to 12 two maybe, is 10 but, to 12 yeah. but three is like four to six i would say yeah okay three is shorter yeah even resident evil 8 i think first playthrough is like seven or eight hmm. and then i can beat it in like under two right now yeah whatever the speed run trophy is in that game you got, I it. got it yeah so yeah. it's and i think that was like three hours or something so resident evil 8 is probably one of yeah my i don't favorites. know my yeah, I think it's it's my oh gosh, I don't know. I always go back and forth. It might I, be my favorite Resident Evil game. I put it above I think four. Seven. The issue with yeah, I I think the beginning of seven. I've said this many times. Yeah. Like the first half, maybe of Resident Evil Seven is the best Resident Evil out there it just kind of falls apart in the end. And that's, I think, my biggest complaint about Resident Evil 4, and it seems to happen in a lot of Resident Evil games, it kind of falls apart at the end. When you go to, like, the island in Resident Evil 4, and it's, like, this military compound or something, I'm like, this doesn't really... Everything was fine up to here. The village, the castle, the whatever. I guess that's pretty much Village. But then when you go to, like, the island, I'm like, this doesn't really fit anymore i don't know that's my biggest issue with four but and that kind of goes hand in hand with it just being too long i think i don't think that part needed to be there but yeah if i don't get a dino crisis remake soon i'm gonna be i'm gonna lose my mind man you got exo primal <laughs> you know oh yeah just we'll don't be. just just here's raptors falling out of the sky but don't call it dino Crisis. like why not just it's so weird because capcom ever since they they screwed up the street fighter 5 launch without a freaking arcade mode, which was one of my most viral tweets ever because I tweeted, it's like, oh, I can hear Angry Joe getting ready to do a rant because Street Fighter V doesn't have an arcade mode. He was like, what? And he retweeted it, and then my phone blew up for like three days. After that came out, and since then, they have fixed five. Um, I am excited for six. I'm probably going to get it day one just because. Yes. Is that your chat you I've been hearing this whole time? Hello. What is it? I can we you, hear you. You hear me? Yeah. 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 Jesus God Almighty! It just said I got signed out because I was in an, another device. What the hell is happening? No. You have to I'm still recording. Hold on. You just stopped I, talking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I hear. I've been hearing pop-ups. Does anybody else hear that? Like text messages, notifications. Is that- I haven't. I haven't heard it. Yeah, I just went off just now. That's weird. Um, I didn't hear anything. Well, that was terrifying. I swear to God, if we lose this podcast, I'm going to lose my mind. Um, I don't know what just uh, what the hell was I saying? Well, I don't even. My know. screen still Maybe says it's zero. recording, so yeah, yeah mine you shouldn't too. lose it. <laughs> okay. Oh, Capcom. After Street Fighter Five, they've been on a freaking roll. Resident Evil Seven, Resident Evil Two Remake, Resident Evil Three Remake, Monster Hunter, which I don't care about, but they've been really good apparently. 
Resident Evil 8 was amazing. Now we got Resident Evil 4. Like, I don't remember where I was going, but that's what I wanted to say was that they've been on a roll and I think they will continue to roll, I guess, is what I was going to say. Yeah. Um, that, that just, yeah. The funny thing is that because I freaked out, like all y'all in the windows were just like. And I, I didn't like, know what you froze. Had- I didn't know what was going on, but you looked like you were not happy. So I'm like, what it looked is like happening? you got a message that like something happened like at home. Or That's whatever. what I thought. I'm like, did something bad just happen? Like, what's going on? No, it just popped out and said you're signed out. But apparently, we're still on and recording, even though I'm Jessica White. Okay. Um, all right, uh, James. Let's have you go next. What do you been um, playing, sir? There are three games that I want to talk about. One of them, so as y'all know, the Portal Companion Collection recently came out on Switch. Um, I didn't get it on Switch, but I do have uh, both Portal 1 and... uh, So Portal Still Alive and um, Portal 2 on um, Xbox um, digitally. So I played Portal 1... um, and that game is still so much fun. I think it came out in like 2007 or 2008. Um, and it still controls super well. It still feels really, um, really responsive. And all of like the, the physics and everything still makes sense. And it's still um, just a lot of fun to kind of jump in and play. I would definitely recommend checking it out if... Uh, Y'all haven't played those games before. I know at least two of y'all have Switches. Um, but I know that all y'all also might be holding out for a uh, PS5 uh, iteration of the Companion Collection. That's what I'm hoping for, but man... It has I, to happen. P- Portal is the biggest... It's like it's that and Gears, I think, are the two mm-hmm. biggest gaps in my backlog that I've just never touched. Like, at least I played... Halo one on PC back in freaking, I don't even know. It it must, it was after we moved to Memphis. So it was either Oh three or Oh four on my super high powered PC, um, which I loved. And then I played infinite some when I got my series S for Christmas um, from myself. Um, But yeah, it's, it's portal and it's gears that I'm like gears. I think if I start one, I'm I'm one, two, three, four, five. I'm all the way through. Like third person cover based shooter, great mechanics, freaking chainsaw guns. Just yes. But portal is one of those things where I'm like, man, I, I want it so bad. It seems strange to me that Valve put it on Switch. Because why put it on Switch if you're not gonna put it everywhere? Because if you're only gonna put it in one place, put it on your handheld, the Steam Deck. Yeah. Like, why would they need it though? Because it's already available on Steam. Well, yeah, I guess so. I guess I you don't own, need to put it on I there. Well, I guess. Two, yeah, I, just played, I guess that I makes sense. Re- yeah. See, I just replayed Portal 2 about six months ago. Um, so, I mean, you could do like a package deal maybe. So, do I have to play Portal 1 first or do I just jump to 2? If you know the meme, there's really no reason to okay. play Portal 1. Okay. Um, I honestly after playing portal one the first time ever i thought it was amazing going back a few years later i even though it's short i thought it dragged towards the end and then portal two which is much longer it just flows better and just kept my interest way much more than the first portal i would say that portal is the first one is worth playing just because of how much fun it is and i feel like you can't go back and play the first game after you've played the second game um i mean i feel like if you were to go in it is short it's probably you could probably get through it in two or three hours um wow okay but if if i think if you go and play the second game and you really love it there might be something in you that wishes that you had played the first game first just so that you could have more portal interesting but i don't necessarily think there would be anything wrong with just going back and playing the first game afterwards other than you would just be playing them out of order yeah if i remember correctly the portal is so short because it was pretty much just a, a glorified tech demo right um so that's why it's only like two or three hours um 
but yeah like i mean like james said it is probably worth going back um it's it is so short and it give you kind of the basic fundamentals when you start the second one the second game that i've been playing um as kevin mentioned earlier on my youtube channel i've been playing metroid prime 2 um so this past week i um I think I'm about halfway through the game. I just fought a huge um, flying boss that had like three or four different stages, um, and it was a it was a lot of fun. I thought I was gonna die, which I've never died in one of my let's plays before. Um, so I was a little bit I was a little bit worried there, but um, it was a lot of fun. I love Metroid Prime Two. I didn't remember. Um, I think it's just as good as Metroid Prime 1. Um, I didn't remember it being as good, but I'll save that now. Um, but that video will be up tomorrow morning. Um, and then the third game that I've been playing is Hitman 3. Um, I'd never really played any Hitman until probably six months ago or so. I picked up the Hitman trilogy for like $20 or something in a, in a Best Buy sale. Um, and so I played through Hitman 1 and 2 like right away and I've been saving Hitman 3. So I just started it out and it's uh, really just as good as the, as the first two. Everything that I loved about those games is here again. Um, I've only played two of the levels so far, but the one that I just... We lost Derek. We lost Derek, but I know uh, I know he couldn't stay on forever, so he may have just dropped and just gave me a heart attack because of this whole situation. I swear to God, if we lose this podcast, <laughs> I'm going to be so pissed off. Um, um, but it, it's okay. Keep going. So Hitman 3, um, I think it's just as good as the other Hitman games. The level that I just played, um, it's the level that everybody talks about that oh, takes place in a manner. The mansion. That, yep. mm -hmm, where you can just approach it like any other level but then you can also go and do these crazy side objectives and do all this stuff it was really cool um but looking forward to playing more of that too and awesome. uh, I, I think that's pretty much it all right so sean have you played anything else other than the cat game mm -hmm. all right let's talk straight so Sean, you beat it, right? I have not beaten it yet. I was hoping to beat it last night, but we went out to dinner and I was so tired. And I was like, Sean, are we going to do a Zoom test call? And Sean's like. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I just went to bed instead. So having beaten it, what are your spoiler free thoughts of Stray? I think it's fine. I think the hype got a little too big for its britches. Uh, from just playing as a cat, you know, from that perspective. Oh, um, Derek, Derek's computer battery his, died. His laptop <laughs> died. Um, from that perspective, I think it's really <clears throat> good. You feel like you're playing as a cat. Um, it, they, they nailed, I'm guessing it was all like motion capture and stuff, but like, Oh, did all they the motion capture these freaking cats? Do you like, think they like, did mocap on a cat? But how? But no, like I, I, I know cats. So. But no, I know cats. I cannot picture a cat. You just attach a bunch of balls to their fur. Yeah, and they go, and then they bite you, and then they piss on the floor and stuff. Yeah, like, they probably use that in the game. All I know you is when they to the part where you, where you pee on the couch. My God, I hope I hope that's not. Damn it. <laughs> um, but like, but no, it okay. Just keep going. I think that part is fun. I think the story is almost kind of just shoehorned in. I mean, I won't give any spoilers away, but it's like a how essentially a post-apocalyptic city. I mean, you're in a city. I assume the whole world is just whatever, but there's like no humans. It's a bunch of robots. And the whole story is just kind of figuring out kind of what happened, what happened. and whatever. Um, so everything I've seen about it makes it kind of look like it, just a cat walking simulator is that basically what it is for the mo well yes and no there's like so there there are some enemies really there's one enemy well there's two enemies but they're in it a lot 
I mean, there's there's a bunch of them, but there's only two different types of enemies. I guess. Oh, I've only seen one so far, so that's it. So, oh, the sentinels or the other one. Yeah, whatever. Most of it is just running away from them. You do get a weapon at some point, but what I didn't realize until later, you only have it for like one chapter. It's like, hey, there's a bunch of enemies here, so you can use this. But there's a trophy for getting through that area without using it. So the one place I could have used the weapon, I didn't use it because I needed to do it that way to get a trophy. And then you just, you lose it and it's gone. The rest of the game, you're back to just running away from the enemies. Um, so that's the thing you go for. I don't know. It is kind of like a walking simulator, I guess, but you're a cat and you can <laughs> jump and go up and down, which a lot of walking simulators you can't. But like there are some places you can die. But yeah, it's more just a story from the point of view of a cat but it's good i like it i'm sure it'll be in my top 10 but probably like in the 8 9 10 range it's not like my game of the year or anything but it was fine i enjoyed it um it's wor- what i will say is if i paid 40 dollars for it i think i'd be disappointed that's what so I was i'm ask. glad yeah i'm glad it was included in ps plus whatever i mean i've got the top one now i don't know what level you have to be to get it but um I would be disappointed if I paid forty dollars for it. I no, think. thirty. Thirty. It was a thirty. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's a little more reasonable, but well, I don't know. I liked it. I enjoyed it. Um, I'm gonna get the platinum. All I gotta do is do the speed run now. I've just had no time to do it. Yeah. But so, I don't know. It was how, fine. I enjoyed it. How long do you think it took you to beat it when you were just trying to play through it? Uh, it took me, I think, seven and a half hours, but that was like doing all the collectible that was like trying to do everything in one playthrough and now my second playthrough is going to be the speed run if i wasn't trying to do everything but i also wasn't trying to speed run it four or five hours maybe i don't know something like that but i don't know what do you think kevin so so far i have not beaten it i've gotten to the point where i can go in and um i'm gonna go find what i assume is the weapon um, I got to go get the freaking laundry detergent or whatever. Th- this is my thing. Um, let me get the bad out of the way first. This game to me so far, at least is obtuse. I got to the point where, and I wrote this down word for word. My cat needs to fix a tracker. So I find the guy to fix it, but he needs a blanket because he's cold. So I find the old lady that sells blankets, but she'll only do it if I give her an electric cable, but I can only buy an electric cable if I find the super detergent, which I had never heard anything about before. So this is like Zelda one on another level, I would say. Um, It is very obtuse. Yeah. Like, but I mean, it almost, we have have the internet so I can look up super detergent is I got to scare this thing when he drops the paint. So it goes out so I can get in the laundry and get the detergent and get out and then give it to the lady and get the cable and then get the thing and go from there. I feel like it almost sounds like older 2d Zelda games where you have like side missions and trading sequences. Yes. Like your, your trading sequences that everybody calls a side mission, but it's really not a side mission because you can't beat the game without doing it. I agree. It, it it's is like the it's like the much, trading yeah. sequence in Link's Awakening, but well, so that's it, it. The the same trading sequence, that same kind of stuff. It's in all of those early two D Zelda games. I'm not sure so much about Zelda one, Zelda two, but I, I'm pretty sure Zelda three, Link to the Past. There's a decent one in there, um, where it might be a little bit more subtle. Not and to I the know- extent of the other ones. But there, there's a couple like, hey, bring me this. But it's not okay. Now you okay. take this to that guy, and then you take that to. It's not like a whole thing. But it's not like I think getting... there's one in Minish Cap. There's definitely, there's definitely the one, one in Minish in... Cap. There's one in both Oracle games. I because I replayed okay. those last year, worlds, and the ones in it. those games, it was to the point. So I, when I was playing Oracle of Ages, which I think I talked about last time I was on uh, y'all's podcast, the trading sequence messed me up so badly that when I went into seasons. Every time I would talk to someone and they say like, oh, I like such and such. I would like write it down in a notebook. Yeah. <laughs> well, and then there's Ocarina Time with the big Goron sword. Like that, that whole that thing. That one's actually optional though. No, no. Right, right. But it's still, it is like 
10 or 12 steps mm-hmm. and it's ridiculous yeah. and i've never done it with that game and very um, obscure so i will say so that's the only bad out of the way um i will say so i got the meow 100 times trophy before i even moved in the game because i knew it was a trophy and i just sat there and i was like meow 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 um I, I wrote down one of my notes is just cat simulator. Like, especially in the very beginning of this game, when you're with your buddies before things get sad, when they get sad, I was like, I wish I didn't see like this. Is, Sean knows what I'm talking about. It gets real sad real quick. And it is just, it, if you're an animal lover, it's hard to watch. Um, but the cat simulator thing at the beginning, when you're seeing your buddies and you're like nuzzling and you're like wrestling, and you're doing all this cute cat stuff and everything. I was like, I love this. And then everything just goes to hell. <laughs> so I was getting frustrated in the beginning because I'm like, you thought you're supposed to jump know where to go. I'm like, yeah, I can't do it. It doesn't let me off this edge. I can't jump up here. I can't jump up there. That's a dead end. That's open, but it doesn't let me go there. I'm like, I don't know what to do. And I'm like, oh, it wants me to go sleep on this pillow i'm like okay well i guess i am a cat so then i just went to sleep and then all of a sudden the game opened up but well the other thing um when the cat puts on this is not a spoiler but at some point you're the cat i mean you're the cat but at some point you get a backpack with your little robot buddy thing and when that when he first puts that thing on it's a cat he's like i don't and he's just like i don't i don't like this why would you put this on you know what i mean he's just like a cat and he's pissed off and i love it um the only thing i don't like that sorry there's one other thing i don't like about this game sean why in the blue hell if you're playing on playstation okay if you ever have to select something or go through a menu or go to the next thing you have to push square and not x what it is the i hell? got used to it by the end but i i'm still after like two hours i'm not used to it no it, it definitely took me a while it just seems like it should just be x the default button is x anytime you're selecting like that's yes. weird something from a menu just hit x and then in this game it's like square because i know life. In some games, they'll flip it so that circle is your like confirm button. Because but, in Japan, I think that that, that's that, yeah, I think less... that ties to it being a Japanese yep. thing. That's so I was looking at my I was looking at my Switch Pro controller just now to see where A and B are and see if it would be the same spot, but it's not. Yeah, it's I can't to me circle will always just mean back, and the fact that in Japan yeah. it means confirm. But if, if you think about it, X does look like a cancel. So I, I I get it, but it's just ingrained in yeah, us. Yeah, but I'm not looking at the buttons when I push them. Well, exactly, right, right. So I mean, and then I, even on the uh, so that where circle is on the um, PlayStation controller is B on the Xbox controller, and it's literally the exact same thing. Right, but it's A on Nintendo controllers, and A is usually the you know affirmative you know confirm button, but. I don't know. It's all over the place. I mean, I get why Xbox went X, Y, A, B instead of Y, X, B, A. I get it because that was I Nintendo's get it, but thing. I don't like it. But I hate it. I wish they would have just been like, you know, the, the hell with it. They, they can't copyright buttons on a freaking controller. <laughs> what, what did I say? Yeah. yeah, not buttons. Letters on buttons on a controller is what I meant to say. Um, but I really do like Stray. I just, I, I worry about... But now actually hearing Sean, I'm not as worried as I was getting the weapon. I get like, like, I don't want my cat using what I just want to be a cat and just go nimbly bimbly from tree to tree and solve puzzles and get out of this hellscape. Um, I, I do think the setting when you realize Sean knows what I'm talking about. And if you play the game, you know what I'm talking about. When you realize what the actual city is that you're in and like how it came to be, do you know what I mean? Like when you look mm-hmm. at the sky, that's like, I feel like this it reminds game, me that, of, it reminds me of Final Fantasy seven. Yes, I can see that. Like, yeah. does, does this game get incredibly sad for these stupid robots? I'll just ask that. I don't want if it's not it. already. You, you just got to play it. Okay. 
So I have a question for you, Kevin. Yes. So you upgraded. So Sean, you already had PlayStation Plus Premium, or are you extra? Uh, not. I have for like a few weeks now. Not from the start, but I ended up upgrading. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you you up you ended up upgrading before Stray though. So you would have had it anyway, right? I would have. Yeah. But Kevin, you upgraded to play Stray. Not specifically, but you were going to buy it, and then you ended up paying for the upgrade because it was cheaper. Yeah. So, so do you think if there is someone out there that is specifically going to upgrade just to play this game, do you think they could be disappointed, or do you think that it's not? It depends. Th- this game, I-, I will say this game is definitely not for everybody. Um, but there's also probably a lot of people out there that – the, the, the thing that kind of sucks for me is when I was going through PS plus extra, a lot of the games that are on there either I already own or I don't want to play, or I've already bought and I haven't played yet like red dead Two. Mm-hmm. Um, but for me where I was at in my time frame and everything, it was 23 bucks to upgrade to PS plus right. extra or 30 for stray. And I was like, I'm going to play this game either way. So for me, it was a no brainer, save seven bucks and we'll see what else. Right, comes right, out. right. But th- this this game is definitely not for everybody. But like you were saying, the whole <clears throat> like the walking simulator thing. It's not like Death Stranding where you got to hold L two and R two, and you got like. Can you imagine a cat with like seventeen briefcases on its back? That would be amazing. Um, <clears throat> but <clears throat> I tend to like these like slower story driven games. Like, especially after I spent 80, 90 hours, whatever it was, getting the platinum in, in Elden Ring. And I know God of War is going to be at least 20, if not more, probably 40 to 50 to get the platinum this November. I like to have these smaller interstitial games that speak to me from a story level. But again, this is definitely not for everybody. I do think a lot of the charm, which we all kind of knew and figured going into this, is the fact that you're a cat. If you were like, a person or if you were just another robot in this robot city it would just be a meh kind of game yes. like i think a lot of the charm i guess of the game is the fact that you play as a cat the story is fine it's not like it's it it checks all the boxes of it uh, i don't know it's just your cat so that's why it's cool that's why it's different but it's fine i like it but it's it's not like game of the year or even close to it no it'll definitely i think it'll end up in my top 10 but like right now it's elden ring it's horizon it's turtles it's i don't know what else um without looking at my list but like it's not better than any of those games so all right sean i can't do the fancy edit and i'm probably going to forget to do this in post but do you want to go ahead and get to the news of the week let's do it So the last of us part one had a whole bunch of leaks happen. And then naughty dog, fine. Naughty dog finally took the, took the lid off and gave us some updates on what last of us part one actually is. And this comes from the PS blog. The last of us part one on PS five will feature a host of gameplay and presentation enhancements. that will bring the game closer to its original vision. According to co-president Neil Druckmann, you can learn more in new video, blah, 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 blah. While The Last of Us Part 1 can render native 4K at targeted 30 frames per second or dynamic 4K at targeted 60 frames per second and features PS5 mainstays like DualSense wireless control haptics, trigger effects, and 3D audio, it's clear that there's a lot more going on here than a simple resolution and frame rate bump. It's a complete overhaul. From the art direction to the character models, the entire game has been rebuilt from the ground up to take advantage of a new generation of graphical capability allowing the game to reach the visual fidelity that the studio aspired for when crafting this experience. The PS5's powerful hardware drives a host of visual benefits from denser physics with tons of bumpables. I love these words, bumpables and chippables bullets can now rip apart concrete and environmental objects and cinematics now transition seamlessly to gameplay. Motion matching technology means the character animations flow more convincingly, intuitively and realistically all adding another layer of believability to characters and their interactions with the world. 
Further, AI upgrades mean that the characters inhabit the world in a more authentic and realistic way, such as buddy characters navigating cover to avoid enemy NPC sightlines more authentically. The enhancements are all in the name of increasing the game's immersion. But the improvements don't stop there. Naughty Dog worked with their community to integrate some fan requests, including a permadeath mode, a speedrun mode, and a host of brand new unlockable costumes for Joel and Ellie. The game also hosts 60 plus accessibility options, outpacing what the developer was able to offer with The Last of Us Part 2. It includes a new audio description mode, ensuring that play is rewarding and inclusive for all. So when the leaks happened, the guy that leaked it said there's no gameplay enhancements. It's the same game. Um, and I'll, I'll just say this. If you're out on this game, I get it. I'm not here to change your mind or anything like that. But I do think based on what Naughty Dog has shown, permadeath, speed run, new costumes, accessibility options. That was not the word. Accessibility options. Haptics for each gun and bow. You can pet the giraffe and you can feel it like in your little fingers and stuff on the dual sense. I think it's clear that this is not just The Last of Us remastered, remastered. But if you don't want to pay 70 bucks for this game, especially if you own The Last of Us and The Last of Us remastered already, I get it. But when I look at this, and the one thing I will say is they didn't in this article get really in depth on gameplay changes. But when I watched the leaked footage, and then when I watched the 10 minute video that Naughty Dog put out, to me, it looks way more like The Last of Us Part Two gameplay than it does The Last of Us original or remastered. Sean, where are you at on TLU one or TLU part one? Uh, I mean, I think it's still day one for me. Um, <clears throat> I get people saying $70 is too much, but I stand by the fact that games have been pretty much the same price for decades now and are like the only thing that hasn't gone up in cost in that same time. I would have, um, I, I would have gladly paid knowing what I ended up with 120 bucks for Elden Ring, period flat out. right like i would have paid 100 bucks for g actually i did pay because i bought it on ps3 and ps4 and ps5 so i paid over 100 bucks for gta 5 it's completely worth it it's it's what you want from a game but yes games are way way cheaper now than they were in the 16-bit era let's not forget that yeah so i do think this I can agree that $70 seems a bit much for this. This seems like it should be more of like a I don't know, 60, 50 dollars maybe. I don't know. 70 something just seems off about it, but it's still going to sell millions of copies. You're not going to the people that want to get this game are going to get it regardless. There's hardly anybody if anybody out there that's like seventy dollars. No, if it was sixty, I would get it. But seventy, no. Like, no. Everybody's still gonna buy this game. It's gonna be a great game. I'm looking forward to it. Um, but I guess I can understand why people think seventy is too much. But John, you mentioned that we've been paying sixty dollars for games forever. It was beginning of the PS3, right? Which came out what two thousand six? No, but I'm going back to like. The NES games were like oh. 50, 60 dollars. Like it's Dude. ridiculous. Some games were like a hundred for some like virtual racing. Virtual racing on Genesis, on Genesis was a hundred. Yes. Super yeah. Street Fighter 2 on Genesis, like, I'm pretty sure, and Super Nintendo, I'm pretty sure was either 75 or 80 bucks because it was 32 meg cart on SNES and a 40 meg cart. Yeah, on Genesis. it's not like it's not like new NES games used to be twenty dollars. <clears throat> Once we went to C D, everything changed. They've yes. been they've been pretty much the same price for 30 probably 30 years now give or take um so yeah i don't understand now systems have gotten a lot more expensive <laughs> like the super nintendo was what like 200 dollars when it came out and yeah. now so it's to me it's weird and you should count your lucky stars that video games haven't gone up in price now the systems obviously have but the fact that the systems have tell you well the games probably should have too but they haven't so just be happy that they are only seventy dollars now. But yeah, so I one one quick thing. Just I went to this inflation calculator. I don't know if it's right or not. 
usinflationcalculator.com. If in 1995, I purchased an item video game for $50, then in 2022, that item would cost $97 and 21 cents. So even a $50 game in 95 on Saturn or PS one would be almost a hundred bucks right now. So it's not, it's not the numeric amount. It's just the, especially as like game budgets have gone through the roof. Like we don't, it, it's amazing that we're just now paying $70 for games is mm-hmm. what I would say. Cause, well, cause I did, so I did the same thing, but I used 2006. Um, and so if games were to stay the same price relative to inflation since 2006, games should be $90 right now. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So we're, we're both saying the same thing. Like we don't, yeah. we, we're getting way, way more value for these games, even at $70 than we were back in the day, but separate from game price and everything, James, where are you at on the last of us part one? Um, I'll probably get it. Okay. I, uh, so I didn't play the last of us on PS three. Um, my PlayStation four was my first PlayStation that I ever bought. Um, and I bought the last of, um, last of us remastered with it nice. um simply because i had heard that it was good and it was like 15 dollars. Yep. <laughs> um but I'll, I'll probably get it i really like the last of us part two um i also don't have any major issues with the last of us part one i know that kevin we've talked before that you f- think it feels kind of clunky um i still i feel like it still plays pretty well um but I'd like to be able to play it natively on PS5. And I also think that they'll probably do a native um, PS5 port of The Last of Us Part Two. Um, yeah. So I think that I'd like to get uh, both of those eventually. A director's cut or something. I, I have to assume that's happening. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah, when it comes to The Last of Us 1, I didn't play it on PS3 either. And I knew the ending, but I didn't know the beginning. And then when they announced Last of Us Remastered for PS4, I'll never forget that E3. Didn't they, they show sh- it like in the trailer or something? They showed that moment in the beginning in the trailer. And I was like, well, now the entire game spoiled for me. You, you, I, I think that's the main reason that this game has never been like in my top 10 is because the two biggest story moments I already knew because I didn't play it right when it came out. Even though it was a 10 at IGN, it was like a 90, whatever on Metacritic. Um, that's That's on me. What I'm really interested to see in this game, though, now that we know whatever you think about The Last of Us Part 2, which I have my thoughts, there's a chance we could be putting it on trial here relatively shortly before Part 1 comes out. But no matter what you think about that story, now that we know that almost everyone that plays Part 1 will have played Part 2 and will know how Part 1 plays into Part 2, I am so curious to see if this is not a shot for shot remake, but they're going to do something with that moment in the first game that changes things. I don't think they're going to show another character or anything because that all happened after, but I won't be surprised if there's not something linking them. The other thing I'm interested to know, because in the trailer for this, they showed the left behind DLC. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of thinking that there's going to be, I don't think it's going to be a separate quote unquote, game i almost think what they're going to do is at some point in the story they're going to hard cut and then they're going to go to the left behind dlc you play through that which i think will be cool because wherever they put it i'm sure they'll do it at the right spot and then you go back to ellie and joel and you go from there but i i so you think they'll just work it into the actual game i think so somehow i mean it'll be having to select it separately well like as a flashback in I, I would imagine that they would uh, kind of fit it in wherever it makes sense. But in um, The Last of Us Remastered, I remember it tells you, like, in the main menu, do not play the Left Behind uh, Left Behind if you have not played or if you have not finished the actual, the main game. Interesting. Because it'll have, that. like, spoilers and stuff, which I don't really think it does. Because I, if I remember correctly, it, it the entirety of... Uh, left behind takes place before the events of yep the the game yep um 
Yeah, that's interesting. I forgot that. Or it would take place between the prologue and the main chunk exactly. of the game. Right, right. Obviously. The other thing, like, I do think it's so weird that, like, Naughty Dog has now turned into Ubisoft when it comes to leaks. Um, well, I think I put this in the Discord, but it's like, Last of Us Part Two happened. It was COVID. It was the beginning of COVID. Maybe it was a QA tester. Maybe not. I don't know if that was ever confirmed, but, like, Somebody leaked it because they were mad. They got people to be mad at the game before it came out. Luckily, I never saw it, but I, I had heard. I wish I would have. So, with the Last of Us Part Two leak that happened right around the beginning of COVID and stuff, I had heard it was some kind of security thing when people started yep. working from home that they weren't, um, that somebody like their home network or something got like hacked and they get gotten in that way i don't know if that's true but that's just what i had heard yeah. that um like working on something from home made it more um vulnerable yeah um but i also which i was actually um dustin and i were talking about this yesterday um i think that because Naughty Dog is basically Sony's like um their trademark studio that that's that's who every studio wants to be Naughty Dog which you can probably make the argument that Insomniac is taking that role from them but yeah, we know close. yeah but and we don't know what Naughty Dog is working on at least for because we don't know what they're working on after Last of Us Part 1 right other than whatever factions Last of Us is. multiplayer yeah that everybody's been calling factions for two years, even yep. though I don't yep. think no, Naughty no, Dog no. has ever actually. <laughs> yep. um, but I think having that kind of reputation and then also not knowing what they're working on, I think makes them such a big target that if you are somebody trying to get information, you know that any information you can get out of Naughty Dog would be a... Um, a hot like a like a high ticket item or it would be like newsworthy does that make sense yeah for sure that i, I think i think that being in that reputation kind of puts a um, almost kind of like puts a target on their back whereas insomniac i feel like the same thing would happen to insomniac if we didn't know what insomniac was going to be working on for the next like five years yeah i, I do i, I kind of agree with what colin was saying this weekend on sacred symbols was that it does seem like Naughty Dog is almost unfairly treated. It's almost like with great power comes great responsibility. And because we know, or we, the royal we, know how good they are, when people are pissed off at The Last of Us Part Two for obvious reasons, that like, I, I wonder if the leak happened because the person internally or the hacker was mad at what they saw. So they were like, F this, this is not the story I want. And now that that leak happened, now everyone is like, yeah, psh, it's just it's just Last of Us again. It just looks better. It's the same gameplay, whatever. I do think they're kind of fairly untreated, unfairly treated, I should say. Did I say fairly untreated? Jesus. Yep. Um, <laughs> I agree. But I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm still in day one. I, to me, it looks like, to me, this is easily the best Last of Us game, and I don't think it's even close. But it's... What I always said about Last of Us Part 2 is I thought it was a, me personally, I did not like the story. That's putting it mildly. But on a technical level, I played that thing on my base PS4. And I don't think I've seen anything on PS5 that is more beautiful than what I saw on my base PS4 with The Last of Us Part 2. It's a technical masterpiece. So if you're going to do that level of quality with the story that I think is much better with The Last of Us 1... I'm I'm in like I want to play that it's the same way like Metal Gear Solid 3 that I hope the remake will eventually happen like I love that game already the story is amazing if you can just make it better and more technically perfect I'm in Sean any final thoughts on the last of us part one no I think we've I think we covered it you think we beat it to death all right so. oh speaking of beating it to death that's what I do wonder when Ellie gets her revenge on a certain character that I'm not going to spoil in case you haven't played the game. The, the first one, when she gets that uh, sharp object in the uh, 
that is going to be brutal. Like the opening is going to break me. Mm. That that was the one thing in the leaks towards, I did well, not watch. Yeah. I was like, nope, no. Nope, like towards either. the end of the game. Yeah, in the in okay. the in this you know this the, the snow the fire section. and stuff. Yes. Yep. Okay, I know what you're talking about now. Yeah. All right. Next up on the news list, Bruce Straley, formerly of Naughty Dog, has formed Wildflower Interactive, and this comes from Push Square. Naughty Dog veteran Bruce Straley departed the company almost five years ago, having burned out on AAA development following the re- release of Uncharted 4 A Thief's End. The co-director is perhaps best known for his collaboration with Neil Druckmann on The Last of Us, which went on to become one of Sony's best ever games. It's getting remade for the PS5 later this year. It's almost like I planned out this stuff to work together in a nice flow. Straley, having taken some time out, is now back with a new company, Wildflower Interactive. As part of an introduction video, he explained that the developer has an, quote, exciting partner that supports what we're doing and is going to help us reach the broadest audience possible, end quote. As it recruits more employees, it's also hoping to establish a new workplace culture. The website explains, we're building a small, open-hearted team of creators that want to improve their skills and still lead a good life outside of work. Just remember, Naughty Dog used to have a horrible crunch culture so that's why that's in there people that want to hone their craft have a say in the process feel respected for their contributions and be a part of the evolution of this awesome medium end quote straley stopped short of sharing specific details about any particular game but did mention that what it's working on is unlike anything you've ever played before the studio mentions multiple projects however so it'll be interesting to see what comes of this Normally when we get this stuff announced, I'm like, what? I, I don't need to talk about this because there's no point because there's no game. There's no nothing. But Bruce Straley is like, I know it's Neil Druckmann now, but there's a version of history where Druckmann's the one that got burnt out and Straley is the one leading Naughty Dog as president right now. And he is the goat. So Typically, I wouldn't talk about something like this, at least as a major news item, but I feel like whatever they're going to work on, it's going to be something that's worth it. What do y'all think? I don't know. Uh, I, I mean, still, sorry, go ahead, Sean. I was just going to say, I mean, everything you said is true about Straley. So I have high hopes for whatever it is. My only thing, it's like, how many times can we hear somebody say, oh, it's unlike anything you've ever seen? It's not. It's going to be <laughs> more or less what we've seen before with maybe right. a couple tidbits that we haven't seen before, every but, i mean it's a video every game, upcoming like, game is unlike anything we've ever exactly. seen. exactly hey let, like let's be real be i will say possible, this but. death stranding was unlike anything we've ever seen before <laughs> sean i don't need a follow-up comment from you but sometimes people that say that are correct whether whatever you think about the game there i do still think i i agree with y'all it's not going to be something we haven't seen before i assume it's going to be a third person action adventure game but just the fact that Death Stranding exists and it's probably only Kojima with his crazy mind that could make it happen shows that there are still somehow new ideas out there. But yeah, James, what do you think? I don't know. I I generally just, I generally don't care about new studios being formed because it's always like, oh, we got this one really great person. But I feel like unless you're Hideo Kojima, uh, one it doesn't take one person to create a game that this one as we've seen with uh yuji naka and uh Ugh. what was that game bell and wonder world yeah bell and wonder world that one person that did some really great things can go on to make some garbage and i also feel like getting people excited about studio the creation of a studio it's like oh we're making a game studio and we want to make a game and look at all these really cool people that we have with us i feel like this is how the hype train gets yeah. way out of control because that people are like oh yeah they've been telling us that this they told us that when they created the studio that this game was going to be unlike anything we've ever seen and then you expect it to be the greatest game you've ever seen in your life for the six years that it takes them to actually make a game. And then they can't live up to whatever you've created in your head. Like, I just feel like it's kind of ridiculous. I would much rather you, I would much rather see games that are actually coming than hear about people coming together to want to create a game in the next like five to seven years. Yep. 
The only, th- I agree with you on pretty much everything you said. The only thing that I would say that jumps out to me is Glenn Schofield and Callisto protocol. Like Glenn Schofield created dead space. He left, he's doing his own thing. He's working on a game. He's working on a game. And then we see it and Callisto protocol to me is just like, I never played dead space, but Oh my God, this looks like one of the most incredible things I've ever seen and grossest things I've ever seen in my life. So, so I, I'm in the same boat that I've, so I've never played um, dead space and I do think the Callisto protocol looks really cool, but I feel like it's more so that he is the exception and not the actual yes. rule Agreed. because how, how long, I'm sorry, but we've been hearing the same thing about, oh, Jade Raymond is working on this, and now that didn't work out, so then she's going to go and do this, and how many of these how many of these, like, character these executive characters yep. are we going to get really excited about only for, like, nothing to come of it? I agree. Sean, you were going to say something? I was just going to mention Iga. Ah. Huh? As another... Koji Igarashi. Example the- where... It- where it worked out the grandfather of castlevania and the creator of bloodstained ritual of the night oh god man. but yes i do think that is more the exception than the rule but are we going to get bloodstained to not curse the moon but i mean bloodstained ritual of the night too god i hope so i gotta feel at this point because it came so. out 18 it's been four years i know there was dlc and stuff but i gotta feel like he's working wow. And I hope he made enough money off Kickstarter. Kicks, what the heck was that? Kickstarter and the actual sales of the game that he can finance the next game, which I I can't wait for. I would love to see him go back to pixel art, but that's probably not going to happen. Yeah. And the last item on the news list. Uh, speaking of guys with big names, John Romero is back, and this comes from Eurogamer. Legendary game maker Jose Romero. What, damn it! What the hell? You <laughs> stupid. <laughs> Was that you, Sean? It's John Romero. Uh, right? I think I think I think it was Derek. No, I didn't share yeah, it to it him. <laughs> Listen, legendary game maker John Romero, best known for his work on developer id software, seminal run of 90 shooters, including Wolfenstein, Doom, and Quake, has announced he's working on a new FPS in collaboration with an as yet unnamed quote major publisher. Romero shared the news in a statement posted to Twitter, revealing the project is being ham- handled by Romero Games, which most recently worked on a mafia strategy titled Empire of Sin for publisher Paradox Interactive, and that it would be built around a, quote, original new IP. Beyond that, details are thin. The official FAQ says it's way too early to share any other information, with the remainder of the announcement only noting that Romero Games is currently hiring across a range of positions for its new FPS, and it is particularly keen to hear from those with experience using Unreal Engine 5. So basically what it comes down to this, the guy who made Doom and Wolfenstein and Quake is getting back into the FPS genre, and he's doing an Unreal 5. I, I but, think it's it's funny that you're asking for people with experience with Unreal 5. Like, who really? And I, I don't know enough about Unreal 5, but it seems like it has not been widely available for a very long time. So mm-hmm. I don't know. But what do y'all think about Romero getting back to FPS and hopefully using Unreal 5 for it? I feel like this is what we just talked about. <laughs> that they <laughs> And it will like, be it unlike anything. I'm sorry, did we've we ever did we go over before. this news item twice? Like <laughs> this is oh really really great guy that worked on these three games is making a game with un unannounced publisher. Like oh I love unannounced so, publisher. Like <laughs> is it my thinking, especially because now it is Microsoft. Obviously, he's not part of it anymore. There's something about me that thinks hmm. I'm not saying that Microsoft would acquire Romero games or anything like that, but I could see the major publisher as being them. It could also be EA. It could be Activision. It could be Sony. It could be whatever. It's not Nintendo. That's the one we can rule out, but any hype at all, Sean, for an FPS from John Romero or Jose Romero, as he is also known. (laughs) Uh, No, not really. I feel like if it's too early to announce anything at your game, like about your game, Surely these people have a way to let people know that they're hiring other than like making these press statements. 
Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, and I also think like, part of me wonders if he's motivated because he saw doom 2016 and then he saw doom eternal, which were both freaking unreal when it comes to no pun intended FPS games. Like, I wonder if he's like, okay, but this genre didn't exist without me. So I'm not dead and buried yet. Let me show y'all what I can still do is what I hope this means, but we'll see. Now it's time for the wrap up. Microsoft's Activision purchase may be approved by the FTC as early as next month. Why I think this is interesting is if this somehow happens in August, if Call of Duty does somehow, there's no Starfield now. If they get this acquisition done and they say, you know what, we own you now, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 is on Game Pass day one, you're, you're going to have a bigger bump in sales than you would have had for Game Pass sales than you would have for Starfield. Can we agree on that? Yes, but probably approved by the FTC doesn't necessarily mean right. Then how finalizing the, the deal. deals. Yeah. So we'll see. I just, I assume this deal is going through. I can't see any way that it doesn't at this point, but we'll keep our tabs on it. That's not what I meant to say. We'll keep tab. We'll do what, what is it we do with tabs? Keep our tab. Keep we'll, them. Keep tabs on it. <laughs> yeah, Discord, that, that works. Yeah. Discord <laughs> is coming to Xbox before PlayStation, which was supposed to be early this year since PlayStation invested a good sum of money into Discord, but somehow it's coming to Xbox first. I, I remember. I, I don't care about Discord. I mean, I know we talk on Discord all the time, but when it comes to game yeah. chat stuff, like I don't, I don't really play multiplayer. If I do, it's I, usually... There- it's usually with Sean think, and we get on a call or something, but I don't think there's anything that's going to make me use. I will never use discord to connect with people. I'm trying to play a game with yeah. other than just using whatever, like the in-game chat is like, yeah. I feel like, why would I prefer that? Right. Unless you're right, like, I, I know. know some people that, uh, some like PC gamers will say that they like discord because it's like better, which I get that. But, I feel like trying to have any secondary things happening on your on your PlayStation is kind of difficult already. It's not good. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. I just think it's weird that it's coming to Xbox first when PlayStation invested all this money into Discord. So good job, yeah. Jim Ryan. Hello, gamers. Uh Sean, Jeff Grubb says the Phoenix Rising sequel is now going to be a spinoff based on Hawaiian Polynesian culture. It still has a God narrator and it will be less of a Breath of the Wild copy and it's maybe coming in 2025. This makes me so sad. I mean, it sucks that it's not till 2025, but I kind of dig it. I've been watching a lot of Moana lately with yeah. Kira. Do we, get, like, do, we get to, do we get to fight the rock? <laughs> I, I think i hope so is he the final boss? i think that could be a good uh oh i wouldn't i wouldn't be surprised if the rock makes a cameo in that oh game my god yes or yeah, is think, just in the, the game i think the polynesian kind of thing I, to me that works with phoenix you're you're not going to see god of war right. polynesian like right right but with phoenix rising just like the art style the kind of just cartoony like i think I think that makes perfect sense. I'm, I mean, I'm looking forward to it, and I will probably continue to be looking forward to it for the next three years. But but I, I could also see good. them making a series that kind of revolves around these like character caricatures of these different like cultures. Whereas like the first uh, Immortals: Phoenix Rising was like Greek mythology, whereas this next one looks like it's gonna be hawaiian mythology where they could do another one on like egyptian mythology and then do another one on like um like the i don't know norse. i'm, I'm running i'm running out of, i'm running out of mythologies <laughs> well you could do norse you could do roman as, as i joked about about what god of war 3 could be you go beat up jesus i don't know it could be anything like i don't it, it could be any of those um uh nintendo eShop 
uh, updates on the Wii U and the 3DS. Good Lord. It, it, it had to happen, but it's still, it, this is just sad to read. As of August 29th of this year, you will no longer be able to add funds to your accounts on Wii U or 3DS. And as of March 27th, 2023, you can no longer make purchases. However, you can still re-download games and DLC, quote, for the foreseeable future. So physical games. Not surprised about Wii U. More 3DS surprised seems way about too 3DS. Early. Yep. Um, however, the only way right now to uh play the Minish Cap uh legally is to buy it on Wii U yep. um through the virtual console. So once that shuts down, it's a free for all out there. Do what you want with no uh with no remorse. I still hate that I can't get through uh, Minish Cap on my emulator because when I walk through a certain door in the final castle, it just breaks. And I'm like, well, okay, I'm going to watch it on Twitter. So You can watch me play it on my YouTube channel if you want. I am aware. I did, I did a Let's Play of Minish Cap. It's awesome. <laughs> uh, Spider-Man Remastered is officially hitting PC August 12th, which I think we already knew that date, but they announced it like we didn't know. So whatever. I feel like I'm in the mortal Kombat thing all over again. It I will. Thought on... they gave the... Sorry. I thought they gave the date in the state of play. I think they did. Yeah. But it, now they, we know the feature. So it's going to have an unlocked frame rate, DLSS support, ray trace reflections and improved shadows, ultra wide monitor support, as well as customizable controls. Speaking of PlayStation, they've signed a deal with toy company spin master to make licensed toys based on PS IPs. And I'm like, my God, my wallet already hurts I like enough. It. <laughs> I'm th- this is gonna be bad. It's gonna be bad for me. If the if these are high quality, I'm screwed. I'm not familiar with Spin Master. I'm not either, but just the fact yeah, that like neither. we're gonna get officially licensed PlayStation toys, my 40 mm-hmm. year old brain is like <laughs> even honestly, even if they're not high quality, yeah. If they're not impossible to get, like if you don't have if they're not hundreds of dollars and you have to right. pre-order them there is a pretty good chance that I'm probably going to have the, some the, of these. The fact that we've never gotten anything close to Amiibo for PlayStation is really sad, but well, well. Yeah. PlayStation also acquired esports platform repeat.gg, which I had never in my life heard of until this past week. PlayStation is also ending support via Twitter with the ask PlayStation address or uh, Twitter handle. So you're going to have to just go actually open tickets and (laughs) be like you work. God almighty. It just makes me think of work. Um, (laughs) Persona 5 Royal on PS5 will not have a free upgrade from PS4. So if you own the game on PS4 and you want to play it on PS5, guess what? You got to buy it again for 40 bucks. So it's not just Sony that nickels and dimes like the, these $10 upgrades and stuff. At least they're not $40 upgrades. Mario Strikers Battle League. James, did you get this? I forget. I did. I you like it? it. Oh. I have not <laughs> <laughs> Well, when you do, there will be a free, free update that adds Daisy, Shy Guy, and a new arena as well. Mm-hmm. I, went ahead, I went ahead and got it just because I know Nintendo games don't ever really yeah. drop in price and all i've really enjoyed all of the um nintendo the mario sports games that i've played um did you I play thought, the original one on gamecube it did not but See, i remember i, I love hearing it. really good like, things about it that like it was so much fun that was when mario was like playing mario like Golf. every single sport and yeah. playing in the olympics <laughs> Well, well when I heard, you know, they were doing the new Mario Golf and then the new Strikers, I was super excited for both. And then I just haven't bought either of them. But um, I thought Mario uh, Tennis Aces was really good. Um, surprisingly kind of hard. Golf, I thought was good as well. Like, it, I feel like people were kind of mad that it was kind of light on content. But um, I feel like for a golf game, like, I don't need that much content. Like it's like, it's golf. Like right. I'm not. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. But I am looking forward to trying it out eventually. The final fantasy 10 series. So 10 and 10 twos, including the HD releases has now sold 20.8 million copies across all of them. I'm sure you're happy about that, Sean. The Saints Row reboot has gone gold. It seems like previews that are coming out are pretty positive on this, but to me, I'm like, I'd rather just replay GTA 5 again. Uh, 
Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the Cowabunga Collection finally has a release date and it's August 30th. The problem is that's just a few days before September 2nd when The Last of Us Part 1 comes out. But I cannot wait for this. God, I hope it has a platinum trophy. And with Rewind and stuff, I'm going to beat Turtles 1 and I'm going to get this platinum trophy. You heard it here first. I feel like The Last of Us Part 1 is going to be pretty intense. You're going to need some breaks in there. Yeah. <laughs> and also, I might be able to get the platinum in two or three days <laughs> in between this and when, yeah. when it comes out. Uh, no More Heroes 3, the former Switch exclusive, is coming to PlayStation, Xbox, and PC on October 11th. Uh, we got a bunch of Ubisoft updates, including that the Avatar, Avatar apparently, was that you, Sean, or did I type it wrong? Uh, Ava- Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, oh, that maybe that's why, has been delayed to at least April 2023. I never thought that game was coming out this year. I still don't know that the movie is. They It had been slated for this, this year up until like a week ago. Yeah. Yeah, it was supposed to be holiday to, to coincide with the movie. Um, there's also an unannounced premium game coming in that time frame as well. Originally, apparently it was supposed to come out between April, 2022 and April 23, but we, it's never even been announced. So I don't know how they thought that thing was going to come out, whatever it is. Uh, there's also multiple Assassin's Creed games in development, which I think we've already known this as well, but there's Mm -hmm. project rift, which is a smaller standalone Valhalla game as well as project red, which is supposedly set in Asia. And it will be part of the new Assassin's Creed Infinity. Also, Ubisoft canceled freaking Ghost Recon Frontline, which was one of the worst debuts ever for a video game. And apparently they were working on Splinter Cell VR for the Meta Quest, which has also been canceled because they hate Splinter Cell. I doubt the remake's actually going to come out at this point, honestly. Probably not. Gorilla is shutting down online services for Killzone Mercenary, Killzone Shadowfall, as well as Rigs on August 12th of this year. If you're still playing those online, I think they do have <laughs> platinum uh, specific trophies that you have to earn on uh, via multiplayer. So good luck with that. Grounded. What is Rigs? Rigs is, ri- oh God, I can't remember what it stands for, but it came out, I think it was like early in the PS4 life cycle, but it was some kind okay. of. Yeah, I, I can't remember what it stands for. I should have read that. <laughs> uh, Grounded, the Xbox game from Obsidian, is getting an animated series because apparently every game that ever existed is. I will say this. I've never played this game, but just knowing the premise and being like, honey, I it shrunk the cool. kids, this should get yeah. an animated series. This, it, I think the animated series will probably be better than the game, but who knows? Um, did that game ever, it, did it ever come out of early access? Um, I know at the last Xbox event, they gave a date for it. Okay. I don't think it's technically out of early access yet. Yeah. I played a little bit of the, uh, what they were calling like the demo and I thought it was cool, but I, I decided that I was going to wait until the, the, it eventually comes out. Yeah. Um, but it, it's been in early access for so long that I even forgot it was in early access until they announced that right. it was actually coming out. Um, Lego, there's uh, Lego is releasing a Lego Atari 2600 August 1st for $240 as part of the 50th anniversary. And I think this, it doesn't like play Atari games, but maybe it kind of, uh, there's something weird about this. But $240? Yeah. That's insane. Well, it's probably more than the actual thing cost when it came out. And now a Lego version of it, <laughs> which doesn't even much. play games. Yeah. <laughs> uh it was announced that the joker is officially not in gotham knights and batman is actually really dead apparently in the opening cutscene, you actually see him die but again i don't know if i'm gonna play this game but i don't believe them Do we also this is one? not wait this is not in the arkham universe they did also confirm that so that's how they probably were like yeah joker could be in the game but he's not he's he's not in the game he might be alive he might be dead but he's not in the game Hmm. Do we have a, a date for Gotham Knights? It's late October, but I don't remember exactly what. So it's around the oh, time when Call of Duty comes out, I think, which is not good. I don't care about Call of Duty, but if I'm trying if I'm trying to finish up replaying God of War to yeah. go into Ragnarok, there's no way I'm getting this game. Yeah. Not, this not is, at launch at least. This is one of those where for me, I think I'm going to wait and see in reviews and then maybe I ask for it for Christmas because by then I'll be a 41-year-old big baby. Um, it's a it's a pre-order and get to it in five years, yeah. like Red Dead 2. 
uh, Kojima, because of course we just had the Metal Gear 35th anniversary. Um, this was the 32nd anniversary, I believe. Yeah. Of Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake. And he went on Twitter to say he wanted to actually name the game, not Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake, but something in the, the realm of Indiana Jones and the blank. So it was going to be Solid Snake and the Metal Gear AB24, whatever. Yeah. So I just yeah. thought that was funny. Uh, Switch Online updates. It's getting Fighter's History, Kirby's Avalanche, which is basically Puyo Puyo Tetris, but with Kirby. Or, I mean, Puyo Puyo with Kirby. And then Daiva Story 6, I've never heard of. Fighter's History, Sean, did you know Capcom... Th- first off, this game was presented by... Data East. And Capcom sued Data East because they're like, you literally just copied Street Fighter 2. You can't put this really? out. And the court said, no, when you make something that's as popular as Street Fighter 2, there are going to be people that try to copy that. As long as they aren't having Ryu and Ken throw Hadoukens and Dragon Punches, you have no basis. We're throwing this out. Um, but the game was, was it nowhere, any. It was no. Was it any more of a copycat than any other 2D when, fighting game that has come out? When I've looked at when I've looked at footage of it, there are characters that are similar. But the biggest thing to me is just the the life bars look like they're right out of Street Fighter 2. And there's also, there's fireballs and rising punches and stuff like that. Um, so I do kind of want to try that out just because I don't think I ever played it back in the day. And last but also least, LeBron James is in multiverses because of course he is. <sighs> I hope Superman kicks his ass, and I wish it was Henry Cavill. Uh, you can also <laughs> you can also buy Le- LeBron James as a skin in Fortnite right now. Really? Did I yeah. miss that? Uh, I think it came out today. <laughs> Kevin Exe has crashed. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's it for episode. I didn't even say what the number was because I flubbed the intro of this episode so many times. And I don't even know if this recording worked and this is all going to be for not. But even if it was, we had a fun time chatting. But that's it for episode 290. Thank you to Derek for being here. I'm sorry that your laptop died. <laughs> Thank you to James for being here. It's been way too long, sir. We got to get, I, I got to do better about getting you on more often. Um, it was awesome to talk to you. I, I love podcasting with you. This was a lot of fun. Uh, Sean, you're my brother. You're just, you're there. Yeah. Um, Hopefully we will be back to normal next week. But until that time, Sean, go ahead and take us out. Thank you for playing.